want to know what the movers and shakers of New Hampshire's performing arts are thinking? Welcome to New Hampshire Unscripted with your host, Ray Dudley. So, good to talk to you again. I think it's been almost a year. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty darn close. Yeah, because um, I remember we had a talk in 2020, maybe, maybe a month after the pandemic started. Yeah, yeah, a lot's happened since then. That's so, <laughs> give me an update, baby. What is going on up in Lincoln? Oh, up in Lincoln, New Hampshire. Okay, well, we, um, a couple things. We, first of all, we spent, we shut down for 2020. Um, as did everyone, pretty much. Yep. Um, we, you know, it just, it just, there was a couple of reasons. I mean, it just, I mean, I, obviously everybody knows the, the, the dangers of the, of the virus itself. But, you know, it wasn't, theaters have very limited finances and very limited resources. Right. And so the idea of using that money and those resources to produce, knowing that we would only have minimal audiences just wasn't a very good idea in our mind so did, we did chose you try? Not... didn't you didn't you try to do a couple well we tr- well we did we did some, we didn't produce there's a difference between producing and presenting right. producing is far more time um expensive and also much more expensive right because you have to hire actors you have to rehearse them it takes weeks you know we presented which means we brought in um one act a week for about five weeks so that means we brought in like a comedian and then the next week we had a, like a three piece band and then, you know what I mean? So it was that kind of stuff. So those are far less um, commitment on our part. Um, they still didn't make money <laughs> for the record. Um, they, but it was good. We were glad we did it. We were happy to be able to provide some kind of entertainment, give these people some work. Um, and also, and it, and it provides our, momentum, right? It keeps, it, it, it absolutely, it keeps our name alive. It also lets us dip our foot in, which I think is important. It's important to dip your toe in and kind of understand what's going on. Right. Um, we are a 260 seat theater with the, uh, governor's restrictions of, of six foot distancing that brought us down to roughly 80 to 90 available seats of 80 or 90 seats. We could really on average only sell about 40. And that is not a Gene's Playhouse thing. That was pretty much true across the board with every theater we spoke with. So, you know, the, I mean, we just, that was just, just crazy, right? (laughs) Like, you you know, um, I mean, we had comedians, like we brought, we always bring Justin McKinney every year. We, We have a couple bigger name people that we bring in. Justin normally sells over 200 tickets easily, easily. And we thought, well, you know, we can only see, we can only sell 90. Surely he's going to sell out at 90. 65. Man. Well, there's so his it, bus money home. It just showed how um, people's confidence levels weren't where they needed to be last summer, which yep. again is not a criticism, totally understandable. Yep. Um, it, it felt, the funny thing is that the town of Lincoln and North Woodstock was actually had it actually had more people vacationing there last year last summer than in 2019 are you is, kidding me i'm not i'm not joking and that and and restaurants and um hotels um if they could find the help that was the problem right is that nobody could you know because they had to deal with the guidelines and things like that so because of those they weren't which they weren't doing as as well as they could have but they actually were getting more interest and more attention and more bookings and people trying to get service from them than in 2019 you know because that's what happened, fascinating oh good good no yeah it's it is fascinating we and and, and it, it caused pressure for on our board to be like yeah. hey we've got all these there's all these vacationers why aren't you open why aren't you doing something so we said, okay, we will. And we did, and nobody came. Yeah. So what that really told us, which I think is interesting, is that um, A, people were doing, people had their made, her, their big vacations canceled. So they decided to come to up north to Lincoln or North Woodstock for their smaller vacations. Mm. And they went there specifically to do outdoor things. Yeah. And so it was, they, so when it came to coming into the theater, they weren't feeling, you know, a lot of them were not feeling comfortable. Um, mm. and, and that's fine. That was really important for us to know, you know, yeah. so we tried our hand at it. We tried a few things and then we stopped and we decided to just stick with um, online content um, and to do, you know, just use the time to do, you know, spring cleaning. And you know what I mean? We, we did a lot of work on the theater, both indoors and out. 
um, we restructured some of our business stuff. We got a new ticketing software. We, I mean, we did a lot of, we just decided to use the time to do a lot of things that weren't exactly, didn't exactly cost a lot of money. They just required a lot of time and energy, which we never seem to have, you know? Yeah. Where we're right, right. <laughs> hey, how did your Christmas um, online Christmas thing go? <laughs> it went great. So Good. It, it really, it was, it was so crazy. So we decided we were having an internal debate about whether or not to produce a Christmas right. show, right? Because, and, and I'm, as I'm sure everybody was, you know, everybody was sort of on the fence about like, well, everybody wants to feel normal for the holidays. Are they going to come? Are they not going to come? Um, we, you know, if, if we're doing everything safely, if we're limiting, you know, the people, number of people coming in, we've got our systems in place to keep everything safe. It's a small cast. It was only five, you know, you know, how you know, you were in yeah. it the year before, you know, it's a small show. Yeah, I've seen it. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So we were like, we could, we, we could feasibly do this safely. The question is, will anyone come? Mm -hmm. um, and so inevitably, we decided not to, we decided it was not worth it. It was not worth the time and energy. It was not worth the risk, um, health wise, financial risk, all of that. So that's when we came up with this idea to do it virtually, we, we thought, you know, let's, let's take some clips, you know, let's videotape the some of the parts of the show. And let's put together four, like a four, like mini series of four short, you know, video shorts. Mm -hmm. um, each one was only like four to eight minutes. And they'll just, they'll each have like a part of the story and, and a song or two, you know, and they'll just kind of, and we'll release one every Monday of December, leading right up to the Monday before Christmas. And we won't, we won't charge for it. We're not going to do streaming costs. We're not going to, we're just going to put it out there. It's a goodwill gift. Um, we just want people to see it. We want people to see us. We want people to have a little bit of holiday cheer. We want, you know, we just, from our, from our conversations with other venues, people weren't really making a lot of money on streaming. Yeah. You know, they had tried it. They had tried charging for it. And the amount of money they were getting was, was not significant enough that it was going to make or break anything. Mm -hmm. So we just decided let's, you know, let's just do this. Let's do it as a gift. Let's, and, and let's build goodwill. And perhaps it will lead um, to some donations, which would be fabulous. But either way, it's just about getting our word out. As you said, it's about the momentum, right? right. Keeping our name alive, feeling like we're still entertaining. Um, it was, so, so that's what we did. And we, um, it was a crazy day because we, you know, the cast had all done it before. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we, we did it all in one day. We brought them in. We reviewed everything in, in the morning, um, masked, distanced in the auditorium. So we had loads, of, you know, only five performers and we had loads yeah. of room. We had the garage door open. All this freezing air was coming in. We, you know, we did it as, as safely as possible. Then we put them on the stage again, six foot distance and in like a circle, like facing out so that their sound was not going towards each other. They were facing oh. away. They took their masks off and they vocally recorded all the songs. So all the songs were pre-recorded ahead of time. Oh, really? Yes. And this is the reason we did that because then we took a break. We had lunch. We cleaned. We disinfected. We had one of those crazy spray pumps. Yeah. Disinfected the whole theater. Wow. They got into costume and they came back and then we filmed. Now we did keep actors six foot distanced while filming. Mm-hmm. But we didn't think that was enough for them to be singing at each other live. Right. So instead of singing at each other live, they were lip syncing to the pre-recorded music and vocals that they had already audio recorded. That's how we did it completely safe. And um, it was and it was just a crazy, crazy marathon day. We were there for like, I don't know, 14 hours or something. Um, and we got the whole thing done. And then we had one week to edit the first video and then a week and a week and I just kept <laughs> getting them out there. But we were shocked at how much um, attention we got on them. It was oh, really nice. Good. It, was, good. it was really nice. You know, yeah, the we, numbers were good. The numbers were huge. I mean, they had a thing like 40,000 hits and stuff. I mean, what? it was crazy. Oh yeah. It was nuts. It was nuts. It was nuts. And, and we were getting tons and tons of messages and, and, you know, thank you so much. This is amazing. We love this. When are you opening? What's the, what's your normal schedule? I mean, we were, it, it was really shocking how much. I guess the Ukraine really be. loves Christmas, right? <laughs> Apparently we, I mean, we were just really surprised at how much goodwill we got from it. So that's um, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And also now we've got all this beautiful footage to be able to advertise 
the live production in 2021, you know, which was another thought process behind all this is how do we, you know, how can we not only give this as a gift, but then also draw attention to the fact that if you like what you see, come see it live next year, yeah. you know? Brilliant marketing idea. Brilliant. It kind of worked out. Yeah. So I think the money piece of it, you know, and I get it. I mean, every theater has to do what, you know, what works for them. And mm -hmm every theater has a different financial situation, but I just, from what we, we talked to multiple companies who did not really make a lot on um, streaming and charging for tickets. So we just decided to, that this was not about money. This was about keeping the name alive, goodwill, marketing, et cetera. And we'll figure out the financial piece some other way. So I know you can't and, and wouldn't give specifics, but how are you guys situated financially now? Are you, are you okay? I mean, are we you, are, we are, good, we're okay. Good. We're going to make it through. We made some pretty good decisions. I think early on, um, we, you know, we did have to, I mean, we, we, there was a period where we decided to um, furlough some staff in order to, you know, early on mm -hmm. in order to get, get through and make everything work. Um, and, and we were able to save on certain costs. We also, what people, some people don't know yet, we had just gotten rid of our mortgage. I know. Yeah. We, I mean, we literally got rid of it in December of 2019. Um, and the building shut down in January. Yeah. And I remember yeah. was to be shut down from January through uh, May. So we were already situated with overheads expenses at their bare minimum. Um, so while we saved a little bit of money um, through doing some through furloughing until we could until we kind of got a lay of the land, right? Mm -hmm. Like we didn't we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if there was going to be relief aid. We didn't know how things were going to pan out. So we decided the best thing was to do a little bit of furloughing just to get just to get our 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 grasp get a grasp on what where everything was going to be. Mm -hmm. And then once we figured that out, we were able to apply for the correct relief funds. Again, we saved on this. We did donation drives. We had a huge, huge fundraising drive called Just the Ticket mm -hmm. over the summer yeah. where we, um, you know, we, we had people donate what would have been the cost of their ticket if they were going to come see the show. And we took, we had them submit a photo of themselves and we post, we plastered the photos all over the seats in the auditorium, took photos. And that was a big marketing draw as well. Um, so between donations you know, amazing corporate sponsorships who did not pull their funds, even though we didn't do the season. I mean, they, they just wanted to support us and, um, and the relief funds and some of the, and I think just the choices we made in terms of keeping overhead costs as low as possible, we made it over the hump of 2020. Um, and now we are kind of where exactly where we need to be in terms of producing for 2021. Mm. So, um, and we have, we're, we're being very conservative for 2021. I mean, 2021, we are planning to open. Um, it's just not a, um, it's not a normal year, of course, which it isn't for anybody, mm. but we are, you know, so yeah, so we, I mean, we did make it over the financial hump and we are in okay shape. And, and that's, I think that's been the hardest thing because, I mean, obviously for everybody, it was hard to get over the hump and to, and it was very scary because nobody knew what was going to happen. Right. But I think, you know, we're kind of at a place now where we need, you know, that's why it was so important to open, to, to announce our shows for 2021 and to let people know we are producing this summer. Because I think, I think there were a lot of question marks and people were like, we love this theater, but are we, are we donating to something that's a sinking ship? You know, are we donating to the Titanic or are we donating to something that is going to keep producing, you know? And of course, it, you know, we, we wanted people to know that, yes, we are okay. We are going to, we've, we've, we've figured it out. We are okay. We are producing. It's going to be great. And we're going to get back to normal. Um, so we're hoping that now that we've announced the season, we've announced that we're moving forward, that that will take some peace of mind off of our patrons and our sponsors and our donors. Before we get into your season, uh, I sure. just wanted to say how remarkable, what a test of leadership this past year has been, right? You, oh. Most folks come on, you, you think you're going to roll through, have another nice year, do your plays and, you know, bank whatever you can bank, and then boom. I mean, right. this this was a real test. And I'm not knocking any theaters that had to close down, you know, no. but for those who have been able to stay afloat, and hang in there that their whole teams hats off to everybody who's been able to accomplish that 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, every theater is different. Um, we, you know, North Country Center for the Arts at Gene's Playhouse, we're kind of, we're a little bit of the underdog, right? We're small, we're a little bit of a smaller operation. We, we have, you know, when I came in in 2017, we had to restructure. We had to figure out a way to make more money. We had to um, continue to build our quality of production. That was kind of the, some of the goals that were set when I arrived. And so consequently, you know, we, we are lucky because we have a smaller staff to support. We have, you know, we own our building now. We have low, you know, we have lower um, overhead expenses. I think of some of these venues um, that, that are in a different situation than us, the Palace Theater, the Capital Center for the Arts, um, you know, Portsmouth Rep. Music Hall, Seacoast Rep, um, uh, you know, even Winnipesaukee, they have, you know, much larger staff than we do. These, and I just, I mean, it's, it is, it's a testament to their leadership, to all of their leaderships to have yeah. kept them afloat because they all have very different situations that they've had to um, deal with. And, and admittedly, our situation was um, because of where we were and what we had done, I think our situation was our hump was a little smaller than some theaters, you yeah. know? Yeah. But, uh, but still, I, I don't want to uh, minimize how you got there. I mean, the, the well. whole mortgage, I mean, <laughs> seriously, that what was going on behind the scenes prior to this says a lot for what was going on up there. I, I really think I don't, we were, we were already theaters. dealing with how to redevelop this theater and how to get over a financial hump and how right. to solve problems. We've been dealing with that since the building opened, quite frankly, but definitely since 2017 when I arrived and we've made really amazing progress between 2017 and 2019. And boy, as they say, you know, it's all in the timing. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, 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 we solved some of those issues right in the nick of time. Yeah, that's my point. <laughs> Kudos to you. Kudos to you. So when I reached out to you for an update for this year, you mentioned that you were on a committee with like Neil and some other folks. Yeah. That, yeah. So what's going on with that? So, and, and I want to be totally upfront. I've only been on this committee for a little bit of time compared to Neil and others who have been on much longer. I was asked to join last year over the summer and, I, and that's when they originally came up with the guidelines and, you know, they're at least their guideline recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, that's what this committee is. It's essentially a sub an arts based subcommittee of the like of of the governor's task force you know and so the idea is that that we get together we create um recommendation guidelines recommendation changes things like that submit them to the governor's task force who then votes on them and gives them to the um to the department of health and and, and gets the final ball rolling and this I was not part of the table right i mean b before the arts were kind of Absolutely. Bus. Absolutely. And Nikki from um, Capital Center for the Arts is actually now on the task force as well, on the governor's task force. That makes a big difference um, for the arts. Mm -hmm. So I think for me, I didn't join her originally because we were so busy last summer. And quite frankly, we knew we weren't going to be producing. So it's not that I didn't care what the guidelines were. Of course I cared, but I knew they were in good hands and I recognized that they weren't going to affect Gene's Playhouse immediately. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and I, we just had so many, el so much else on our plates. Again, we are a smaller staff, so we are, you know, yeah. so I did not join initially. Um, and they all did some wonderful work. Neil uh, McAhoon, Andrew Pennard, um, uh, you know, there's lots of great people on that committee. Um, Joe Gleason, they, they all did a lot of the preliminary work and that all was really great. They came up with the guidelines. Now, just because what they came up with and what actually turned into the guidelines aren't exactly the same thing, mm -hmm. but you know, they at least created the foundational work. Um, then when they, when I heard that they were reconvening to change the guidelines and try to make new ones for this summer, that's when I expressed interest in joining because I did want to be a part of that as I am planning to produce this summer. Mm -hmm. So I'm fairly new to the committee and I, and, but I, I kind of got in right in the nick of time to at least give my two cents on where the guidelines were at. It's interesting. We submitted the guidelines um, and since, and just since Thursday, last Thursday, so probably you haven't interviewed anybody since then, mm -hmm. um, the governor did release the new guidelines, and it was actually a bit of a debacle, if I'm being honest, because, oh. yeah, the guidelines we that we submitted are not, did not get accepted in their entirety. They did by the governor's task force. However, when they went to DHHS and 
um, all of that, they got changed over. And one of the big changes that we wanted um, right now, the current guidelines in the state of New Hampshire are that we um, we are we have to distance our audience. We have to distance our parties six feet from each other, right. front, back, side to side. And they are allowed to take their masks off once they are seated. So mm-hmm. they have to wear masks coming in, going to the bathroom, exiting. But once they're seated in their proper distance, they can take their masks off. Okay. So the big recommendation that was made was let's let's follow the school model and change that to three feet distance, but yep. they have to keep the mask on the whole time. Okay. Because quite frankly, most if of the theaters had required that anyway, had required the masks, not the mm-hmm. three feet, but had required the masks. So we were thinking, well, if everybody just keeps their masks on, why can't we do three foot distancing? That would make an enormous difference. Enormous. Sure. Um, and because the problem with the six feet is that it really means you have to skip every row every other row. And in some cases, I would think in some theaters, it might even be two rows right. if they're really jam packed together. Um, so by doing three feet, that would really make a huge difference. That was the big piece of the puzzle that ended up not making it into the new guidelines. Did they say is, why? We are in the midst of trying to figure that out. Um, it was, it was, but I think it was a, it was a two prong issue here because one, they didn't, they didn't agree with those guidelines, which, okay. That's, that's, I mean, that is technically their, you know, I mean, that is their, uh, you know, prerogative to do that, but we want to know why, and we want to have more discussion about that. But the other part was that the governor then got up on Thursday and said, look, we've done all this amazing stuff for the arts department, for the arts of New Hampshire, when in actuality, they didn't make any changes that help us financially. (laughs) And the problem is that story got picked up by NPR, as well as other... So all of a sudden, now we have to fight this stigma that the arts are fine, don't worry, the guidelines have been changed and everything's okay. Oh. They, they haven't, and they're not okay. You know? <laughs> and we actually need to try to get them changed again now before the summer starts in order for um, us to be able to make more money and not rely on federal aid. And that said, um, for a lot of theaters, and I had a conversation with somebody just the other day about this, even though we want them to change those guidelines for the summer, for some theaters, it's getting, it's really hard because this is the time that they're selling tickets. And this is the time that they need to know how many seats they can sell and how many, and what they can do with group sales and what they can. So it it was actually not a good situation. It was quite a blow for the arts, even though it was advertised as this win for the arts. It was not, unfortunately. Um, Yeah. So here in New Hampshire, we have a really major, major problem coming up for this summer because a lot of us are still stuck only selling about 25% of our house. Oh, 25%. Is that what it comes to? That's yeah. 25 to 30, I think is the average. Yeah. So that is really unfortunate. And um, we really need to try to get that changed one way or the other. It's possible that the CDC will make changes federally, you know, and that may inspire all states to uh, once again, look at their guidelines. But again, as I mentioned, you know, unfortunately the the ideal time to make this change has now passed because. Yeah. That window is either closed or closing quickly. Right. And so I think inevitably what a lot of theaters are going to have to do are um, is sell a certain amount of tickets and then just reopen more seats if they can, once those change, those guidelines change for, but for some theaters, so for jeans playoffs, that's not, that's okay. We can do that because we rely on vacationers. So people don't tend to buy months and months and months in advance, Right. but for other theaters, that's going to be a big problem and they could lose out on those people permanently. Do you know what yeah. I mean? They may not be able to resell those seats once they become available. Oh. And they may. If they just when you think you got it right just when you think man. it's pretty tough i mean yeah it's pretty tough and and i think you know i know i can speak for us we when we created our 2021 budget we decided to and i know this is gonna sound absolutely insane but we had no choice and we we're trying to be as conservative as possible we decided to budget with the idea that there we are only able or we are only going to sell 50 tickets per night now, hopefully that's not the case. And even under the current guidelines, we can sell up to 80 or 90, but we decided that that's what we needed to budget for in order to have realistic expectations and not get, you know, kicked while we're down. You yeah. know, the last thing we wanted to do is overestimate right. and then be in real trouble after the summer, you know, we've done such a good job making it this far. We, we can't, we can't, you know, we can't rely on anything right now. Yeah. 
when you announced your uh, current season, mm -hmm. I thought I heard a big wail, like a, a scream, a cry from, <laughs> from audiences because old, bald, fat guys were not in this season. I know it's hard. It's hard. It was. <laughs> it's a tricky season. We had to be really careful and we had to be really cautious about um, what we could realistically bring in and what we couldn't. I know it's 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 a. I mean, we're really happy with the season. We're really excited. We think that the titles are are good and well known in a year where a lot of companies are forced to look at um, s smaller shows that don't have name recognition, mm -hmm. um, possibly musical reviews, things like that. And those traditionally are not the, um, at least in our neck of the woods, where we, again, cater to vacationers. Yeah. Those don't sell. So okay. If, I'll just go collect yeah. cans along the roadside. What if <laughs> right? You'll be fine. You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, yes, we, we did. We had to put a lot of consideration had to go into our, our season this right. year. And we had to really think it through. So, so tell us what's tell going on. What's your okay. season look like? Well, so, okay. So I'll just say, I'll just tell you the season right off the bat. And then I'll tell you a little bit about why we're doing it and where we, how we came to the conclusion. The, 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 the right off the bat, the season is, um, we are opening the season with the sound of music in concert, and that will be outside. Nice. Um, and and again in concert, so that's going to be our first show. It's, it's a sp kind of a special event. It's only running one week, um, and then we move into the theater, and we will produce Clue the Musical, mm -hmm. Evita, and Forever Platt, and that's our season. Mm -hmm. And so we. So we normally we do five shows. We've cut mm -hmm. down to four this year, and one is only a one week concert. So it's really like three at a concert. Um, we decided to do that completely because of just let's keep this concise, let's keep this tight, let's do it with a smaller um, staff. Let's you know let's figure out how to make this work. Um, we so we started with the three shows in the theater, and what we decided is we wanted to do. Um, we decided to try to keep our main stage company as small as possible for mm -hmm. these three shows. We, we knew we couldn't, we decided we couldn't use any, and this is kind of getting back to your point. We couldn't use any local folk in these three shows um, because of how we're trying to mitigate this issue of COVID. We are building an isolated bubble with our company. Everybody lives in one place. They live in, in a gigantic three-story ski lot as you know. Right. Um, and so we are, that is our like sanctuary of health and safety. Mm -hmm. We are, you know, we are testing people. We are, you know, uh, they're signing contracts saying what they can and can't do. They're, you know, we're, we've got eyes on them at all times. I mean, we are ensuring that this bubble stays isolated. Um, and so this, the problem, and because of that, that is what allows us now to do these shows with them not not staying six feet distance and not wearing masks on stage because they are isolated together. We have mitigated that problem. The minute we add a local person who doesn't live in that bubble, yeah. we are now adding risk. Hey, don't um, worry. There's a soup kitchen right down the road. I'm okay. <laughs> you go, you're good. I don't live in that bubble, which means I will have to wear a mask even though, even though I've actually been vaccinated already and oh. I, and I am, you know, uh, going to be tested and everything just along with everybody else because because myself and my managing director we don't live in those premises we are not technically part of that bubble therefore mm -hmm. protocol of how we handle ourselves and wear masks will be completely different than what the company does obviously the company will be wearing masks during certain elements and where they are but of course when they go home at night we don't we don't want them to have to have masks while they're sleeping, you right. know, <laughs> and, right. and, 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 and they each have a roommate and things like that. So we have to be, we have to be careful about this. So we have, we're going to have incredibly in-depth protocol. We've obviously already thought a lot of it through, but we can't set any of it until we see what happens by June. Mm -hmm. um, the, so, so initially we said, okay, we're going to have a small company. And we figured out that that magic number would be eight to start with. So we'll have eight people. Um, and the reason we picked eight is because uh, Clue the Musical is eight actors. Right. Evita, eight is very small. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, so we are, we are bringing in our Che, our Eva, and our uh, Peron. And 
they will also be tested and added to the bubble for that time. Mm -hmm. um, and that will bring the production to 11. Got you. Um, but that's, that's it. That's still very small for that production, but we mm -hmm. are stripping it down. We're reimagining it as more of a Greek chorus with, th with the three principles. Um, and, a, and, a, and, and then we will sort of go, you know, we're kind of just creating a, an industrial, you know, artistic abstract version of telling this amazing mm -hmm. story. Then everybody leaves other than four and we do Platt and Platt only has four. So that was the original plan. The original plan was, okay, we've got these three shows. This is how we're going to do it. These are the numbers we're using. This is how we keep it safe. Then we knew we wanted to do this concert outside at the beginning because we want, we wanted to at least provide something outdoors in case there were people who wanted to be entertained, who wanted to support us, but were not ready to come into the theater. Nice. That's really smart. And, and so we thought, okay, well, we, if we, and we can do only one weekend because if we find, if, you know, we, there's a lot of locations in Lincoln and North Woodstock that are enormous outdoor areas yeah. where we can set up shop, we can do a production, we can have, truly, we can have, you know, a much larger audience, but have them socially distanced. You know, we're talking like blankets and beach chairs and, we, you know, that's what we're looking at. We're not, mm -hmm. we're not building a theater outside. We didn't think that was worth it for one show. So then we were like, well, what are we going to do? And we thought about it and looked around us and said, well, we're right in the middle of the White Mountains. Why wouldn't we do the sound of music in the mountains? You know, that only yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so that opens the door to, okay, well, now let's look at this cast situation. We have eight kids or eight, eight, eight young actors. Um, we also have our impact company which for those who don't know is our touring children's theater, which we are still planning to do. That's only five actors, five professional actors that we hire in. They're also part of our bubble. Um, so we said, let's for the first time ever bring the impact actors into the main stage. Nice. So that gets us from eight to 13. Now we have 13 actors. And, um, and so the last piece of that is we figured we would job in a mother abbess. You know, so it wasn't some yeah. 21 year old singing Climb Every Mountain. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then we have to find six local children to be in the show. So we are adding some local people into that production. But again, there's a difference there because that production is outside yeah. and it's in concert. So we can appropriately distance them. Um, so that that is how we're handling that show, which is very different than how we're handling the other three shows mm -hmm. that are in the theater and only utilizing our company. So, and again, we, so we were kind of excited. Like we thought to ourselves, wow, wow this is a season that people are going to recognize, you know, yeah. you've got, you've got the sound of music, even though it's in concert, you've got Clue the musical, which maybe people don't know a lot about, but have certainly know the name Clue. Absolutely. You've got Evita and you've got Forever Plaid, both yeah. two amazing classics. So we were really excited about that because as again, a lot of theaters are, are, are looking at smaller titles that are not as well known. Um, and that's amazing and, and wonderful when you have a subscription base that will follow you to, mm -hmm. no matter what you do. But that's just not our situation up north. Our situation is that we have, we rely heavily on vacationers, second homeowners, and they only come if they want to see that show. Right. So doing mm -hmm. falsettos or a new brain or, you know, fun yeah. home. I don't know if those would sell simply because people don't know them. Yeah. Um, at least in our theater. Other theaters are different. But that's How did you what cast the problems. shows? What was that process like? We're still in it. We're still doing it. It's <laughs> been very different this year. It's amazing how different it is. We, so we do, there are a lot of companies, um, a lot of cattle call auditions, such as NETCs, the A1s, Straw Hats. They still had them? They had them virtually. Got you. And that meant different things for different theater, for different companies. Some uh, A1s did actually a virtual event. So you still had to be there at 9 a.m. on this date and watch them. And they were live streamed. Wow. However, um, NETC and Straw Hats went about it a little bit differently. They did more of an online database where you just have access to it and can watch it whenever you want. It... it obviously, that these were all the right choices, right? This is not the year to have live cattle call auditions. Um, so I applaud them for, again, redefining themselves and figuring out how to do this. What's interesting as a producer is, is you don't, when you're looking at somebody on a screen, just like we're looking at each other right now, it's really different. You have no understanding of what their height is, what their build is. Um, 
you you don't get to see them interact with the pianist so and that tells you a lot sometimes um it's a very different environment it's funny how much you rely on those things and you don't even realize it yeah um i can i mean i can't speak for other theaters but i can tell you at gene's playhouse i care equally about whether they are the right personality fit for our company as i do about their talent mm -hmm. and i say that because summer stock is a lot, <laughs> you know, you're, you're, you're crammed together sure. with a lot of people. You have to live, eat, sleep, breathe them for any, this year it's only nine weeks, but normally it's 12 to 14 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, that's a long time. And if you have the wrong personality fit, if you have somebody who is really negative or somebody who just really doesn't want to be there, it is, it can spread quickly. Yeah. And that is a bad, I, that's a bad deal. So um to, for me, it's equally about casting the right personalities as it is about the right talent. Mm -hmm. In these cattle call auditions, the way they're doing them right now, it's very easy to see the talent. You know, you can easily see whether someone sings and whether they can act, right. but you can't see a lot else, yeah. you know? Yeah. So then, then, you're, then you have to go into callback mode, which is on your own terms, which some, every theater does that differently. I've been doing, I've been sending, um, audio tracks and sheet music and saying, Hey, listen, we saw you at such and such. We think you're really talented. Can, if you're interested in working with us, can you please put this on tape and send it to us? Mm. And then we'll set up an interview. So what I'm, a protracted system. Jeez. It, it takes about three times as long as the, as it used to, which is why we're still in casting mode right now. Yeah. We are, um, cause it's, it's just taking forever. It started in February, but we're still, still working on it because it's just, you know, it, you just, you have to get so much from these actors because yeah. first you have to, first you have to pick them and go through all these databases and, and going through the databases is, is way, it's way longer than, you know, um, so once you get through them and you've, and you've selected 10 or 15 actors that you really like, then you have to email them all individually and, and, and give them the materials and then ask, and some will, some will be interested. Some will not, some will have already taken some a job. Some won't reply um, ever. Right. Exactly. That's, just the, that's just the way it works, you know? Yeah. And then finally you get the videos back, some of them, and you start going through and deciding which ones you want to pursue. And then the next step is to set up a zoom interview like this. That way you can, um, you know, talk to them and you can see them read and you can give them direction and see how they take it and stuff. And it's, it's just a very, and, and part of that is to test out their talent, but it's also to get to know them because you've got to get to, you got to see if Absolutely. they're the right It's a huge yeah. component. <laughs> huge. I mean, huge. it's like putting them on a submarine. You know? Yeah, After, it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's going to be even worse this year because this year we're really monitoring. Yep, you know, right, I mean, right. we have to make sure they're not going to the bars. We have to make sure they're not going to the, you know, I mean, they really are. Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, and look, the vaccine news is extremely encouraging, right? We're yeah. all very excited about, about where the vaccine is and where it will be by this summer. Um, I just think it's important for all of us to view, to think of the vaccine as an added level of security. Right. We can't lighten our guidelines because of the vaccine. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. We have to still do what we need to do because, you know, obviously it's funny. People think of it this way. People, people are always like, well, because when you're talking to some of these actors and some of these, you know, you're hiring your tech crew and stuff, they want to know what you're doing. They want to mm -hmm. know how you're keeping them safe, which is a completely reasonable sure. thing to want to know. Um, so we have, that's a long part of our, of our interview process is telling them what we've got planned now what we are waiting on and when we will have the protocol completely finished. Um, and I, I just think it's interesting because a lot of them are thinking to themselves, you know, I want, you know, I want you to care about me. I want you to care about my safety because, and I'm worried you may not. Now that's, I don't mean that about Gene's Playhouse. I just mean right. in general, that's yeah. their concern, right? Does this company care about my safety? Right. Well, look, if you, if you, this, this 26 year old carpenter or whatever, get, get, you know, if you get COVID, obviously the chances that you will get through it safely, or at least okay, are probably pretty high. Mm -hmm. But if you get COVID <laughs> in our bubble, right, we shut down. Yeah. <laughs> so our, our, I, I don't want to say our stakes are higher because obviously the, the worst case scenario for that poor carpenter who might get COVID is, is way worse. But right. the point is we are equally invested in your safety as you are. 
Yeah. Because it, we least. have just as much to lose, right? At least, yeah. At least, yeah. So we we are very, very, you know, we, we, we want to make sure everything is 100% safe and not just for our company, but for our full-time staff, for our amazing volunteers who usher, um, for, of course, our patrons who come in. I mean, we have to make sure we cannot have any breakout whatsoever this summer, mm. um, you know, because that could just, that that could be detrimental, shutting down for a week or two. Yeah, 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 you think? How about, uh, I heard about this collaborative event with uh, yeah, Powerhouse. Brian yeah, Brian Halpern. Yeah, Powerhouse. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Chat about that. Yeah, very exciting. I mean, we're only a small piece of it. Um, they, obviously, Brian and Johanna have done amazing work in the area for mm-hmm. well over a decade. And um, they have have now created, you know, they have been wanting to, I think, have a theater company of their, you know, sort of their own that they could really, right. you know, do great work with. And um, this, this has just been a really, it's, it's a little complicated because so many different companies are involved in it. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got, you've got the colonial, you've got spectacle, you've got bell knap mill. <laughs> you, right. And those are just the main ones. Then you've yeah. got collaborations with, with North country center for the arts and um, Jane's playoffs and uh, uh, Concord and, you know, all that. so it's a lot, but I think that's great because that means you have a lot of companies sort of helping fight for you. Right. I mean, that's yeah. what makes it really great. Um, it is our part of it is simply one show and, and you're very familiar with that show. Uh, we are bringing Christmas Carol there. We, we finally, you know, after doing Christmas Carol for what, two or three years, yeah. we, we kind of put the, the, we sort of finished it. We sort of finished it out and said, look, we need to, we need a break from Christmas Carol. We, um, it's a huge production. Yeah. It's got, and you know, this, it's got enormous technical value, um, it's a huge set. It's, you know, special effects, lighting, crazy and sound, all that. And the problem for Jean's Playhouse is in the, in the winter, in, when we would do that, we don't have staff. We don't have full-time staff, mm-hmm. you know, because we hire in for the summer and then we don't have a lot of local experienced people who can come in and put sets up and run your lighting and run your sound. So it's a tough time for us to do something so demanding and so from that perspective, we decided to kind of halt it. And we, that's when we created White Mountain's Christmas, because White Mountain's Christmas was much more manageable for us to do on our own in mm-hmm. our venue. But we kept all of Christmas Carol because we thought eventually we returned to it or who knows, you know. And so I just didn't think we'd be returning to it this early. <laughs> <laughs> so Brian reached out to me and said, hey, listen, we don't have a Christmas Carol in our area. And, you know, why, why not just do it here? You know? <laughs> and we said, okay, let's look at it. Let's, let's take a look. So uh, yeah, the goal is to, you know, um, we're re- we're going to rework the, we always rework the script a little yeah. bit each time to make it a little, you know, keep improving upon it. And, uh, but I mean, it's smart on their part because, you know, not only does our Christmas Carol have a bit of a following, but we already have all the sets, costumes, right. light, special. I mean, everything's we have it all. That's Just a plug huge and play. amount of money that you don't have to worry about. Yeah. So it made perfect sense for them to reach out to us specifically and ask about you know that version and us and collaborating to do that. Um, we do have some. Obviously, we have some actors who have done it over the years um, who will likely want to continue to do it, and mm-hmm. we're open to that. But we're also open to auditioning locally and seeing just what the Laconia Meredith talent pool looks like and who yeah. wants to be part of the show and obviously we need kids who will all be local and we sure. need, you know and and i'm and i'm i said to brian i said you know i know you may think that in my head i've got this like i want it to be this because it's always this but i said i'm actually it's been a couple of years i'm open to new people new looking at things differently trying it you know yeah. a whole new way um so for me, doing the show and casting it and working with the actors um, for Christmas Carol, is that's the easy part. Mm-hmm. The challenge that we always struggled with at Jeans was the technical piece. Right. But Brian has Tyler Sosi Productions on, like, they're already signed up to do it. So they're handling sound, lighting, sets. All really? Of their, yes, they're handling all of that. Wow. So um, they're going to, I mean, we have the set, but they're going to handle bringing it in, putting it yep. up, um, and then working with me on the lighting, working on the sound. So that was always the piece that I, it was just too much on my plate. Mm-hmm. And that's why we decided to give it up. But now we've got Tyler who's brilliant in his group. So we're not worried about that. Um, so, and Gabe Bean has already come in to help um, 
and to be sort of the costume coordinator to take the costumes right. we have and to you know um re uh y- you know figure out whatever because obviously the costumes are going to have to be altered to fit the pe- the new actors yeah. and we may have to add a few more in and things like that so she, that'll be on her yeah. and um hopefully Val Wisniewski will be back as stage manager who has been our stage manager for the last three productions of it so yeah. she knows that show like the back of her hand so we're actually feeling really confident about this we're really excited yeah. um and again as always <laughs> hey if it's a if it's a success we want to make it an annual tradition yeah you know well and staging the, it at the colonial could be a great great move i mean right i mean the, just the the momentum of having that new theater open yes it's going to be the first time it'll be a christmas show in there i mean a lot can come from this absolutely that's what we're hoping that's what we think and that's what that was the catalyst behind it and we are really hopeful that it becomes an annual tradition it's going to be crazy for me because we're still doing at gene's playhouse white mountains christmas yeah (laughs) so it's going to be like these two shows and we had to be very careful when we selected the dates to make sure that i could do both of them so it's going to be a little crazy because at gene's playhouse we're doing white mountains christmas and then two weeks later at the at the uh at the colonial we've got this joint project of christmas carol yeah. um but With but I, potential I, overlap I, potential overlap in, in oh, actors absolutely you know? yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. because because a lot of the people who are in white mountains christmas i took from christmas carol, right. so, <laughs> um they uh but i think it'll be great i think i think it'll be okay i mean that's the great thing about white mountains christmas is it's it's a much easier simpler productions as you know we can yeah. put that up fairly quickly very little rehearsal so that will be treated more like a professional schedule you know where we just put it together with like a week of rehearsal and one day of tech yeah. whereas Christmas Carol at Laconia will be treated a little bit more like a community schedule with, a, you know, probably, I don't know, somewhere between, say, five and eight weeks of rehearsal and a normal tech week. And, oh, um, but, of rehearsal. You know, Where would you do that? Can you... So that's that's Brian's problem, not mine. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but no, no, I kid, I kid. I mean, it is, but I kid. He is planning. He his belief is that between the space at the mill right. and the um and the, and the actual colonial itself on on nights that it's not in use, we should be able to rehearse right there. Okay, so that that should be pretty good. Um, and then another and then the idea is once we've gotten everything there like sets costumes all that there's storage under the theater that we're planning to use so that we don't have to keep lugging it back and forth every year the idea is a lot of it most of it not all but most of it will be able to live there um which i think is just going to make a really big difference i mean that's the thing yeah you know you remember the first time we ever did it in concord it was like whoa right yeah and then it got easier every time because we we were like well now we know what the lights are now we know how this puts together out so this year this 2021 will be really exciting but it'll be a lot of work but then mm-hmm. if it is successful and we continue to do it it should be it should be cake the future sure. years because we'll already have all the lights written we'll already have the sets and everything right there ready to go um we'll already know how this all works in laconia um so I, we're really excited about it i mean it's it's definitely going to be a really good experience i think and we'll have a lot of, um, it's a fire truck. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> um, and we'll have a, uh, yeah, I think it's, I just think it's going to be a really exciting, fun project. And I'm, I'm looking forward to revive. I'm always, it's one of my favorite shows. So I love, yeah. I love yeah. doing, it. you well, know, people I, like I always, it. People really love it's, it. It's a great show. It's an yeah. absolutely great show. And, uh, it's a wonderful story. And I always am trying to, you know, make edits and changes to get it back to like what it's really about and to get it resi- to resonate with today's every man, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. who I, mean, we, I think we all have a little Scrooge in us, right? <laughs> Especially maybe in the last year. Uh, so yeah. it's nice yeah. to, it's nice to connect to that character and, and see why he is what he is and, and why, you know, what, what, what he needs to get over in order to reconnect with yeah. the human race, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't always, we're not all going to see the, you know, our, the ghost of our dead partners and a bunch of, you know, spirits right. coming to us. But at least we, if we can understand why he inevitably gets to where he does, maybe we can take a little piece of that with us. And right, see, right. We'll, I take agree. A little look at our own lives. Um, <laughs> I agree. So I love that story. It's one of my favorites. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I know you got to go here shortly. So I'll let you go. Anything you want to recap, like after that? Is there anything else that you want to bring up? 
Oh boy. Uh, I don't, I think, I think that's pretty much it. So we're, I mean, we're, we're in the midst of hiring and right now for the summer season, then we will open our reduced and unique, interesting summer season. Then uh, we will, we, we plan as of right now to continue through the fall, like we normally would. Right. Um, so that would mean presenting acts such as comedians and cover bands. Then we would get into Christmas time where we have our two Christmas shows this year then we'd shut down and start all over again. And hopefully by 2022, you know, fingers crossed, yeah. we're, we're even more back to normal um, and doing bigger shows and, you know, back to our, our old, you know, our, right. our ways of, of the way we always used to work. So we're hopeful. We, we you know, I, I think to some degree, this has been such a hard, um, it's been such a hard year for everybody, as we've already discussed. I think for Gene's Playhouse, um, in some ways, this is a little bit of a rebirth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We've, we've been working really hard to rebuild it and restructure it and make, and make things just, just even better. And I'm not sure everybody knew, knew whether we'd make it through the pandemic. And right. now that we have, and that we're coming back stronger than ever, because it's given us an opportunity to get ahead of the ball rather than chasing it, mm-hmm. you know, in terms of our, our planning. Yeah. Playing offense um, instead of defense. Exactly. So I, to some degree, we are really looking forward to this being a rebirth and um, just really, you know, again, we've planned and we've, you know, by budget wise, we've, we've, we've assumed the worst. So yeah. anything above that is going to really be good for yeah. us, this year, you know, and, and we're just, we're so excited to be back on the horse. It's just, you know, I, I after having a relatively, I mean, obviously this past year was very stressful, but it was, I had less, so much less to do this past year, mm. you know? Um, and so my scheduling, my, you know, working from home and not going up as much and, and not, you know, it's been very weird and, and to some degree, a little relaxing, dare I say. So to get back on the horse, there was a little part of me that was like, how am I going to, am I going to be okay with this? <laughs> <laughs> but I have to say, I am chomping at the bit, especially now that we've got the momentum going and we're, and we're hiring getting yeah. excited now and I, I just can't wait I can't really can't I'm yeah. so excited to be yeah. not only working with actors and creating art again but also seeing the patrons who I miss you know I know and, and just seeing their faces and seeing you know getting to talk to them you know after the show as they're leaving the theater I mean well this will it'll be a little different this year we'll talk to them outside not in the lobby but right. you know it's it'll just I'm just looking forward to seeing people happy again yeah well, brother, I appreciate your time. And oh, I got to get to the soup kitchen. They're closing soon. <laughs> yeah, you better hurry. I, <laughs> I hear they have the Ray special. <laughs> ah, Jello and applesauce, baby. There you go. There you go. Well, we'll don't worry. We'll see you in 2022. Plus, All you know, right. you got White All Mountain's right. Christmas. Right. You know? we'll, we'll get you back into White Mountain's Christmas this year. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, man. Thanks, Joel. I really do. All right. Time. And there you have it. Another great one in the tank. That one's going off to the memorial. Have a great day.